being here with us today. So is everybody good? Thank you all uh, for coming today for our uh, what has become a daily update from the city of Charleston. And um, I'm going to start by making a comment about the devastation in the Bahamas. And I know we have an uncertainty over the next 36 hours, but I'm counting our blessings already. Uh, those folks have really had an incredible hit. And uh, I've gotten calls already from some of our citizens in Charleston who are planning relief efforts to help the Bahamas. And um, when this storm passes, um, we're going to help some folks down there. Um, it's really, really uh, heartbreaking to see the destruction that's happened uh, as a result of this storm already. Um, and with that in mind, I, I want to share um, just very briefly um, a couple of verses from Psalm 46 that says that God is our refuge and our strength, always ready, always ready to help us in times of trouble, times like these maybe. And therefore, we will not fear, though the waters of the sea may roar and foam. And in another reading in Galatians, it simply says that we should share each other's troubles and burdens. Um, God is there as our refuge in times of trouble. I think he is. I know he is. It's time for us to share each other's troubles and burdens here in Charleston and the Low Country and in the Bahamas as well. So that being said, um, we, we have, as many of you do, the latest updates from um, the National Weather Service. Um, what's uh, of great concern, as even was mentioned yesterday, is that uh, triple threat of heavy rain, high tides, and storm surge. In fact, even though it's uh, diminished a little bit for today's tide at 103, it's an eight and a half foot tide. And as we saw a week ago, an eight and a half foot tide in Charleston means streets start get it, getting flooded. Tonight um, at 111 a.m. Thursday early morning, the tide is projected to be at 10.3 feet. Now in Irma, it was 9.92 feet. And in Matthew, it was 9.29 feet. So tonight, in the middle of the night, it's likely that we'll have more water on the streets and, um, than we had during either Irma or Matthew. And the tide tomorrow afternoon is uh, projected to be 9.4 feet. So, um, and this is not accounting for the rain. So if we get the copious amount of rain that's projected, particularly during those times when the tide is high, you know what happens. The water's got nowhere to go, and it's going to stay around as well and add to, um, add to, the, to the water. So um, on, in addition to the triple threat, uh, now more so we feel there's a threat of wind, uh, a, a higher risk of wind threat. So it's really a quadruple threat, and um, you know we're going to have tropical tropical force, a storm force wind starting later today. And uh, the National Weather Service has just said that uh, we have the potential of up to uh, 90 mile an hour gusts here in Charleston. So significant wind as well. Um, more water than Matthew and Irma. So I know that the two lanes of I-26, the reverse lanes uh, just turned back to normal. Um, but I feel like it's a last call for evacuation. And, and I'll repeat again, if anybody lives somewhere that flooded in one of these prior events, you ought to head to higher ground. You got just a little bit of time to, to evacuate and get out of town. And if not, get to some friend or some other property uh, that has some higher ground if you flooded in one of those two events. Um, shelters are still open and Nancy Boyd on our staff, she's done a remarkable job 
uh, staying in touch with the shelters if we have any questions specifically about them she'll be able to answer them um, Carta is still running the little loop uh, Keith Benjamin is with us from from traffic and transportation could address any questions about that um, but some folks have gone to just any Carta stop so it's clear you've got to go to um, to a stop that has one of the little blue um, hurricane evacuation symbols to be uh, in a place where you'll get picked up. But they're still doing that as long as the winds, uh, until the winds pick up. We're told that uh, Carter will pick up until sustained winds reach uh, 30 miles an hour. So, um, but, but it really is about last call for folks uh, getting either to a shelter or highest, higher ground. Once again, I want to thank the tireless dedication to service to our city and our citizens from uh, the, this team behind me and they just represent hundreds of other emergency preparedness uh, employees not only of the city but our partners that we collaborate with and um, you know often as I, I might have said this yesterday I'll say it again if you don't mind um, we think about police and fire uh, being our first responders and they're totally critical don't get me wrong but in this case uh, preparing and responding to a hurricane literally each and every department of the city of Charleston is involved uh, from public service to parks to stormwater to finance to livability to information technology our public information our human resources our housing our recreation traffic and transportation planning legal customer service desk all departments have been involved in this amazing effort and I'm just honored to serve with this incredible team. The customer service desk, by the way, just in the last uh, 72 hours has fielded over a thousand uh, calls and requests for information. And I think just in a two day period, um, our public service department helped us get out over 75,000 sandbags for our citizens. They're always willing and able to help our citizens and really have a heart for service amazing team that I'm honored to work with. So um, to a couple of specific updates I'm going to call on uh, just a, a few folks today, one being uh, our Chief Reynolds to tell us about some traffic, potential traffic uh, closures and mine in the store while everybody's gone. Chief? This is a powerful storm. We've been talking about it for several days now and it's time for us to uh, batten down the hatches and, and prepare for responses, recovery. We're working closely with fire rescue, with federal, state, and local resources. We have a lot of assets out in the communities. Our, we have upstaffed all of our patrol areas to pay attention to protect and secure all of our communities. We do not need people out and about right now. Uh, we want to make sure that anybody in a vehicle is not out and about in our communities at the peak of this storm. We're getting to a period now where there's a lot of rain, there's gonna be a lot of wind. The mayor is talking about the very high tides. We are gonna have significant flooding. As a result of that flooding, we will be closing down a lot of roads. We will be closing down large portions of the peninsula. It will not be possible to get in and around. We do not want people stranded in their vehicles we do not want to create situations where we'll have to do rescues and other missions unnecessarily. So as we see the flooding, which is very predict it's predictable knowing what the tides will be, which areas normally flood, we will begin to close those roads down methodically. And it's going to be extensive, the number and the amounts of roads closed in and around the peninsula, in and around the West Ashley area, and other communities that we know flood to protect those communities protect the people in those communities, protect the property in those communities. Anybody who is in and around our communities who means harm to any of our people or any of our properties, I promise you we will be vigilant, we will be present, and we will be making arrests of those people. And we know from prior storms that there's a few people that want to create crime and create problems, and we will be paying very close attention to those things as we've asked people to evacuate and we keep our community in this great city safe. Thank you, Chief. Um, another critical component of our 
response during this time of uh, inclement weather is our fire department chief, uh, Dan Curry. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, to echo what's already been said, this is a very dangerous storm. With a situation like this, the perils to first responders, in addition to the general public, are, are great. The best way you can help the Charleston Fire Department and the Charleston Police Department is either to leave the city or to stay inside. The Charleston Fire Department has transitioned from uh, a mode of preparation to a mode of response. And we anticipate uh, heightened activity at least for the next 36 hours in the city of Charleston. To prepare for that, we have brought extra assets in to the city of Charleston in the form of high water vehicles from the National Guard and swift water rescue teams from the state of South Carolina. We've also moved our firefighters to 12 hour shifts and we have staffed additional vehicles with personnel to anticipate the increased call volume. I'd like to reiterate that the Charleston Fire Department and the Charleston Police Department, in addition to all our response partners in the region, including EMS, are here to serve. We know what our mission is. We're very well prepared. But again, the best way you can help us in our mission is to take your personal safety very seriously right now. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, so that kind of covers the response aspect of the storm. What comes the morning after is recovery. And uh, I'm going to call again on Shannon Scaff, our Director of Emergency Services who's been uh, thinking and planning uh, for a whole year now about what if. And Shannon, tell us what the morning after looks like. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so in addition to the, all the actions that you've uh, heard from all the fine folks that are uh, part of the city of Charleston uh, and the response efforts, we're also shifting a bit of our focus to the recovery. And our city has equipment and personnel that are strategically placed throughout the city to begin recovery operations. We'll start those operations just as soon as it's safe to do so. We remain in very close contact with the county, uh, both Charleston County and Berkeley County and officials from the state of South Carolina. And we'll call upon them uh, to help us with resource needs as we see them. Oh. we got a resource need. Uh -oh. That's a <laughs> Attention. Okay. Attention. An emergency has been reported in this building. Please cease operations and leave the building utilizing the nearest exit or fire exit stairway. Do not use elevators. Repeat. Do not use elevators. Okay. Well, uh, Chief Griffin has walked out to do a quick... Uh, Reconnaissance on uh, on this uh, announcement. Well, uh, let's stand by for a minute and uh, see what what he finds out. Attention! Attention! An emergency has been reported in this building. Please cease operations. You're watching the uh, City of Charleston press conference on the uh, Hurricane Dorian response, and uh, <laughs> an alarm is going off. Fire alarm is going off inside the Gilliard Center. Uh, as uh, they are doing this. The good news is they have the fire chief and battalion chief. Uh, who, one of the battalion chiefs just went out to check and make sure that uh, everything is okay with uh, the building there. We're going to stick with this because uh, obviously Mayor Tecklenburg is not done. Um, but uh, as soon as we're able to get things back up and running, they're going to get back to the podium. Uh, we were talking uh, before we went to the press conference about what's going on along I-26 as we still wait uh, for the interstate to go back to the normal operation, which is uh, right now it's in contraflow, which means the eastbound side of the interstate is all traveling westbound, and that still has not happened. That was supposed to start at noon today, um, but it is a long process, a lengthy process as, we, as we've been reporting all morning. Uh, about four hours or so this could take for them to systematically close off these entrance points that have been flipped around uh, to get people on the switched lanes and also to flush the interstate, make sure everything is clear, and then get back 
to normal operations. Yeah, but the, again, that hasn't started the yet. They're keeping it open, I think, because they're seeing people are listening. We have seen a big crowd using reversal lanes today. I think the most uh, we've seen. Oh yeah, and it's been a, it's been steady all day long. Again, if you're just joining us here at the bottom of the hour, uh, Brad Franco alongside Laura Smith, we're in breaking news coverage of our response to Hurricane Dorian as it is uh, getting ever closer, the center of it, uh, to the city of Charleston and the Low Country in all. And you can see the city of Charleston is doing a briefing right now that has been interrupted by an alarm within the Gilliard Center, a fire alarm. Uh, we heard that happen as uh, the mayor was going through some of the uh, response to uh, the different agencies. Fire Chief Daniel Curia is there. Uh, we also heard from Chief Luther Reynolds, the uh, police chief. And uh, we're just waiting word now on what exactly triggered that alarm. <laughs> it's not unusual for alarms to go off in big buildings, and that also triggers a rather large response by the Charleston Fire Department. So if you're downtown, you probably hear some sirens right about now uh, as they respond it looks to, like we've got highway to get things turned off. To, uh, do something over here. I don't know. They are, uh, it, it appears to still be open. Uh, they are still uh, allowing people to get on I-26 to head out of town on the reverse lanes. You can see right there, uh, the mayor is still working to get things underway. The fire chief just came back in, so hopefully we'll be back to Mayor Tecklenburg and the city's response. I mean, uh, not much has changed over the last couple of days uh, from what he has been saying, as the city is doing all it can to make sure uh, that the city is ready and now the big thing is they want people to stay inside they Sounds don't like want them venturing again. out uh, let's see so what he's talking about see if he's laying to be out able to do it but we're not calling for one we're very hopeful we won't need one or need to call one but just in case as as the chief uh, mentioned how vigilant would we plan to be over the next uh, 48 hours that um, we want to have that tool in the toolbox. And Mr. Mayor, I know we're not there yet, but a lot of people sometimes see curfew, think it's a little bit of annoyance. We heard uh, Chief Luther Reynolds talk about the importance of staying off the streets. Can you tell me about the importance of people staying inside and not disturbing what you guys are already trying to do? Well, yeah, I think that, that comes not just for f someone's personal safety, but for the safety of our first responders, that, that people stay inside. I'll go so far as to say, and this is a really hard thing for a mayor to say of a vibrant and beautiful city, uh, starting late this afternoon for 36 hours, I want Charleston to be a ghost town. I want everybody out of sight, if they're not out of town, inside, hunkered down and safe. And that's the safest thing for them and it's the safest thing for our emergency preparedness team as well. Uh, the sheriff's deputies and King Point firefighters going door to door knocking um, to encourage people to leave now or go. Are similar efforts happening in Charleston? We have, particularly in low lying areas and uh, where uh, uh, vulnerable populations um, are living, where uh, they don't have a lot of their own transportation. The Charleston Housing Authority has been working with us, the fire department and our Department of uh, Housing and Community Develop Development has been doing both door-to-door -door and, um, and putting flyers out, advising people of their options to get out of town and to get the shelter. So yes, we've been doing some of that as well. Just get your reaction real quick. Uh, the governor's office uh, just confirmed that they are going to order the reversal remain in effect until 2 p.m. today because they're seeing lots more traffic right now moving out. Okay, I had not heard that. That's good news. Like I said, it's last call. You still got a couple more hours to use all four lanes out. That's good. We support that. Did we figure out what happened? Yeah. Okay. In the kitchen. It was in the kitchen. <laughs> Somebody's cooking lunch. Now they had not cleaned something. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you again for coming. Everybody be safe. And, um, and let's uh, make sure that's true for everyone in our community. Thank you for helping us get the word out. God bless you.
A lot of new information coming out there, uh, as at least in the last few seconds of that press conference with uh, Charles Mayor John Tecklenburg, interrupted by that fire alarm because of something going something on in cooking. the kitchen. But yeah. we also have some breaking news that you may have heard uh, the mayor talk about, and that is the lane reversal. As we were speculating that they have extended it, they indeed extended that now until 2 o'clock. So the lane reversal will remain in place until 2 o'clock because they have seen such high volumes of people out on that roadway uh, taking part in the evacuation. And we were remarking on this uh, really throughout the morning that there have really been a lot of cars, especially here at this point that we've been looking at at the Mark Clark Interchange. And that's a good thing, and yeah. we are really happy to see that. And we want to go to Sophia Arizosa, who's actually at the press conference where Governor, or not Governor, uh, Mayor John Tecklenburg, where he just spoke. And Sophia, wrap this up for us. Laura, Brad, as you know, this is the third day in a row we've got in this noon update from Mayor John Tecklenburg and his emergency management officials here in the city of Charleston. We know it is all hands on deck. It has been for quite some time. Today we did see a little bit of a shift in the tone. You may recall Mayor John Tecklenburg started this news conference talking about the destruction in the Bahamas and urging people to take this as the last call to evacuate, saying it is safer if you are on higher ground. Now we know that they are expecting flooding here. He has called this storm a triple threat between the high tide, the storm surge, and the rain. I've said it, I'll say it again. On Thursday at around 1 a.m., they are expecting a 10 foot high tide that would put us in uh, five record breaking tides for Charleston. We heard Police Chief Luther Reynolds urge people to stay inside if they are not leaving, saying that there are going to be extensive road closures that come with the flooding, and it will be hard to navigate downtown because of those road closures and it pits you and the first responders who may have to rescue you in peril. So we heard from several uh, people today, everyone urging you to take this storm seriously. They're doing that here. We did have a minor interruption with an alarm that was unrelated to the storm. I will send it back to you. Before I go, actually, I do want to make note. Today we learned that they are considering an emergency ordinance. They're going to be discussing it at 1.30 today on a conference call. It has to do with a curfew. Now, let's be clear. They have not said that curfew will go into effect, but they will discuss it and um, hopefully give the mayor the power to do so if they see fit later. So a curfew is in discussion. It has not been mandated. This will be the third emergency ordinance they're talking about. Yesterday, I told you they passed one on price gouging, protecting citizens, and another on road closures. So I will have the latest on uh, that discussion at 1.30 on News 2, both live on air and online. For now, Sophia Zoza reporting in downtown Charleston. Back to you.